G'day Collectors, Rob here for episode 2 of Aussie Diecast Reviews. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed episode 1 and I hope you're all doing well. Uh, so for episode 2 today I'm going to review the very first car that I posted on my channel. So with my previous videos that I've done I'm going to review them all before I review any more new ones. Uh, just because I think there's some cool cars on there I'd like to, to show you and review. Um, so yeah, so before I show you any more new ones, I'll, I think I might do the old ones first. So uh, yeah, so let's get stuck into it and I'll kick it off and we'll be reviewing this car here. Sweet. Okay, so we have here a classic car collectibles 118 Holden VZ Commodore. The team is the Holden Racing Team and the drivers are Mark Scaife and Garth Tander. This model is based off the 2006 Bathurst 1000. Uh, again, another Bathurst car. It is not a Bathurst winner. It's not a part of the Bathurst 1000 collection that classic car collectibles do. Uh, it's more a part of the Holden Racing Team or, I guess, Holden collection. Uh, yeah, this car had a very strong but very short Bathurst 1000. So let's have a bit of a look at what this car did. The 2006 Bathurst 1000 was held on October the 8th, just one month after the tragic death of former HRT driver Peter Brock. The Holden Racing Team ran a special black bonnet to pay respect to Brock, and their determination to win the event was high for all drivers and teams that weekend, with the winners receiving the Peter Brock Trophy. HRT and a Holden Special Dealer Team made a decision to switch co-drivers that weekend. Scaife teamed up with the 2000 Bathurst winner Garth Tander, and with a combined five Bathurst wins, the pair were going to be hard to beat. The HRT Commodore was setting the pace in practice. Tander had posted the fastest time of a 208.9. However, in the final minutes of the session, Scaife jumped in the car and improved with a scorching 208.1 to extend HRT's lead back to almost a second. And for qualifying, HRT were on top again. This time with a 206.9 and putting Scaife on provisional pole position. In the top 10 shootout, Scaife put the car on pole and it was looking good for HRT with back-to-back -back wins for the Bathurst 1000. But anything can happen in this race. Scaife started alongside FPR driver Jason Bright. The revs rise, the lights went out and the HRT Commodore struggled to get off the line. Scaife falling back at a fast rate and as all that hard work came undone, so did HRT's Bathurst 1000. Scaife fell through the field with a slipping clutch and was hit from behind by Jack Perkins. The contact smashed Scaife into the wall and ended his day and co-driver Garth Tender's championship hopes. And let's have a look at the model now. Yeah, just goes to show anything can happen at that race, so hope you enjoyed that. So, for today, classic car collectibles, one of you hold them as before. Um, standard classic collectibles box. A nice bit of prints on there of the car. The back. So I'll get this out of the box and we'll have a look at the car. Alrighty, so we've got the certificate of authenticity. Uh, limited edition of 1750. I have 898. Um, official Holden Racing Team product. So yeah, that's that. Now onto the car, and there it is. So a couple of cool features on this car. Um, from classics, I'll show you now. You have the tribute of Peter Brock on the side of the cars. All cars that weekend ran that car. Some other cars did as well, I know. Um, I think Craig Lowndes did, so that's some other cool features there. So we'll start with the front. Um, the Holden VZ Commodore was a very aggressive looking V8 supercar. Uh, some couple of cool little features on here. They actually have, coming from classic car collectibles, they actually put Biani model cars on there, so yeah, that's pretty cool. Coming from rival model companies. Um, so yeah, that's the front. I'll show you the bonnet. And that's the bonnet there, just paying respect to Peter Brock that weekend. So very nice. 
While we're here, we'll have a look underneath the car, underneath the bonnet, so let's have a look at that. Alrighty, let's pop the hood and have a look at what's underneath. So, we have the Holden 5 litre V8 engine. Uh, horsepower, this would produce probably close to 650 horsepower. A um, couple little features there, you've got the Mobile One decal on the top of the bonnet. A uh, couple of other little cool features here. The engine cover comes off. Uh, you've got the Holden Racing Team logo on there, so that's pretty good. And then we move on to the engine. And this engine is very, very detailed. Um, this was probably back towards the um, later cars that Classic Car Collectibles did. Um, they're very detailed, not so much now, but I'll get to that in another episode. But as you can see there, you've got the trumpets, all the wiring, uh, rocket covers. So yeah, very, very cool detail. Alrighty, so we'll move on to the side of the car now. And there's just a quick shot of the side. Um, you know, you've got all your regular sponsorships on there, Mobile, Toll, um, Dodo, Racing and all that, so yeah. We also have Scape Tanda on the windows. So in the previous episode one, that's what I was talking about, that's where the air goes in. Um, for the jacks now, so they can change tyres. Um, yeah, some cool features in there, we'll have a look at the rear now. So there's the rear. We'll quickly have a look at the boot. Alright, so you got the fuel system in there, the oil system, all the wiring. Very good detail. Uh, we'll have a look underneath the car now. Alrighty, so you've got the engine there, the transmission, gearbox, uh, the exhaust, we've got the diff and the axle, and fuel sump, pretty basic. Um, detail on the knife. So let's have a bit of a look inside the car now. Alright, looking inside the car, you've got the steering wheel, you've got the dash readout, focus, focus, there we go. Um, what else? Yeah, basic roll cage. A lot better than the previous car that I showed. More structure. Um, another little thing is, is that thing there, that just tells you for endurance races or just for any race, they have um, these lights that tell you if they've put fuel in the car or not, and if the co-driver is in or the main driver is in, so there's some pretty good features. Um, yeah, so we'll move on to the side of the car. So this is looking at the rear door, uh, you got a couple of... I think that's for the drink bottle or the cooling system there, that there. And you've got any roll bars and adjustments. Um, yeah, very detailed, very cool. All right, guys, I do have another car to compare this to. It is a Biani model cars. Um, it is not based off the same car, but it is from the same season. Um, so I might do a bit of a quick comparison just between the two cars and show some of the other features that Bianni offer. Alright guys, so you've got the classic car collectibles on the left and the Bianni on the right side, so um, the Bianni model is based off just the 2006 Mark Scaife season of this V8 supercar season and you've got the model that we viewed today of the Bathurst winner, uh, not winner, the Bathurst HRT car. Um, there is a lot of difference differences between these cars. Um, obviously different tooling and all that but um, I'll point out, just quickly point out some of the features between the two cars. So the first is, you can probably tell, look at the gap between the Vianney car and the classic car. Uh, this is due to the cambers or the wheels. So if you can see it on this car, I have modified this by the way as well but I have put 
different tyres on this, so they do look look a bit um, bulkier, but the way I mean is is the classics cars have more camber I could say if yeah, if you have a look see how the camber, the wheels here, they're more they're not straight up and down, whereas the Bianchi cars suffer from they go straight up and down, whereas the classics ones, they're more, they've got more of a stance, so that's a couple of little features between these cars. Um, so yeah, um, another feature is Bianchi do have a tow cable, classics don't. Um, we'll have a look underneath the bonnet. Okay, so the bonnets and the engine bays, very different. You've still got the Mobile One decals on the underneath the bottom um, engine bay comes off classics uh, nothing nothing going on in the Bianchi one which is a shame because Bianchi do make fantastic models but I think at this time of this period of time I think this was around 2007 2008 I think when these cars were released classics were probably more on the high market model range whereas Bianchi I think they were going through some motorship issues in that so um but yeah very as you can see detailed and not much going on there that's just my honest review that's what I'm here for so yeah um now we'll have a look at the side all right so we've got the classics and the anti So paintwork probably very similar similar style. Both same the paint there. Very similar. Um, as you as I said before, see that gap? Which look obviously I've got different tires on there, but yeah, even with that then different tires the cars were still straight up and down. So you can see that gap and we'll have a look at the clacking front. And it's a lot more lower. Alrighty, looking at the rear, a couple of other features: Bianchi tow cable, classics no tow cable. Um, with the boots, classics you shouldn't do that. You should never lift them from the rear, the rear wing as well. You should always go underneath like that. Uh, yeah, classics. Boot stays up, Bianchi doesn't. Um, detail wise, inside the boot, pretty similar. You know, you got the classics on that side. Oh, oh that's right, because, because this is a Bathurst car, where are we? That car there, they put the fuel filters on that side, and then obviously with this car, it's obviously based off just the V8 supercar around, so the fuel filters on the right. So yeah. So we'll, yeah, with that, at Bathurst when they come in, the um, hose gantries for the fuel always on this side. So the dude will put the fuel in there, and he'll take off. So that's just some other features. Um, we'll have a look inside the cars now. Alrighty, so this is looking inside the Bianchi car. A um, couple of little things here. Detailed roll bar with HSV. Dodo. One thing the classics do not have is that. That is race cam. Not that, that's the windscreen mirror, but that thing there. That is race cam. That doesn't, classics don't have that. Um, probably a lot more going on detail wise with the interior. You've got the um, ignition switches and all that there. Classics don't have that for some reason. I don't know why. Um, you've got ECU down the bottom here. Um, so yeah. And then you've got the net. The, uh, to protect the driver's neck. Classics don't have that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of differences between these cars. They're both good, they're both bad. Um, so yeah, alright guys, so I'll give my honest review about the cars now and we'll wrap it up. 
Alrighty, so just to finish my review on the classic car collectibles car, uh, the goods and bads. There's not a lot of bads with this car. This is a very, very good detailed car. Um, you know, all opening doors, um, bonnet, boot. Um, obviously, it holds a lot of significance to Peter Brock fans and Holden Racing Team fans. Um, for being a tribute car uh, like I said not a lot of bads um, now what I paid for this I paid for this probably, probably back in 2007 $195 now that has skyrocketed immensely I mean these things are going for between $700 and $800 now on eBay so um, they're a very rare car. Um, if you come across it and you, you know, and you need it, well, you, you'd be forking a lot of money over. So, um, but I think it's an, a well worth investment if you're a collector. But in saying that, if you can't, you know, afford or you don't want that kind of car, I would definitely go with the Bianchi version. This is just a plain V8 supercar championship round. Uh, what he ran for that year. Um, again, it's not bad. It's not bad. But I think out of both of them, you know, it would have to go to this one. That's just my honest opinion. The detail, the quality is better. Um, I'd give this a probably a 9 out of 10. I'd probably give this a 7. So, yeah. If you can afford it, go with that one. But, yeah. If you can't, I think these go around for about, oh, I don't know, 100, between 150 to 200. So, yeah, they're still, they're still out there. You can pick them up pretty cheap. But like I said, I did, ages ago, I did customise this car. I didn't like, because they didn't have the, see, we've got the Dunlop on the sides, the decals. I took it off a classic car, collectibles car, and I stuck it on a peony car. That was a long time ago. So, yeah. Um, so that's it, guys. That's it for episode number two. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, yeah, if you liked it, leave a like, leave a comment. And if you know anyone that's into this kind of stuff, share it and subscribe. Um, so that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And I'll catch you around for another Aussie Diecast review. So catch you around.